Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering and my YouTube channel is all about nuclear science and technology. In this video, I'll be sharing an overview of a reactor design called the Magnox. The Magnox reactor is the first electricity generating nuclear reactor in the United Kingdom. In this video, I'll provide an overview of the history of the Magnox and its operations across the world. I'll also go through an overview of how this reactor operated and what really makes this reactor unique. Also, I'll discuss some aspects of this reactor, which make it very different from other reactors as well. Overall, this video is a short summary of the Magnox nuclear reactor. So let me start off by giving an overview of this reactor. The word Magnox, I wonder how you would say that in a British accent, Magnox, comes from the magnesium alloy, which coats the natural fuel elements in the reactor. It's short for magnesium non-oxidizing or Magnox. Okay, so it's a short form. This reactor is quite unique because it runs off of unenriched uranium metal, whereas most power reactors in the world run off of enriched uranium dioxide, which is in the form of a ceramic. So most reactors, like I said, in the world use ceramics, okay? But this uh, uses a fuel that's very different. It's in the shape of metals. And I'll explain a little bit more in this video as to why this was used as a design choice. The moderator, which in nuclear reactors is a fancy way of saying the substance which controls the speed of neutrons in a reaction, okay? It's a really important part in a nuclear reactor is made up of a substance called graphite. Yes, graphite is used in your pencils and it's also used in this reactor. Another aspect which makes this reactor really unique is the fact that it's not cooled by water. Most reactors in the world, uh, most conventional generation two designs are water cooled. Rather, this reactor is cooled using pressurized carbon dioxide gas, which runs as a coolant. So yes, just like blowing on a uh, hot tea to cool it down, this reactor is being cooled down with a gas. So why carbon dioxide? Why not regular air? Well, it's because graphite oxidizes easily in air. Carbon dioxide helps prevent that oxidizing process and helps increase the lifespan of the graphite in the moderator. Also, another advantage of using gas as a coolant is that the overall structure of a reactor can also be size reduced. So this decreases construction cost and the amount of materials that are required to build the reactor. So let's talk about the vessel that holds this reactor. This reactor is held in a steel pressure vessel design other than the last four most recent reactors, which use concrete pressure vessels. So similar to other reactor designs, the operations of the Magnox reactor are very similar where it uses boron steel control rods, which are lowered in vertical channels to control power. So maybe I said this before, but this reactor uses fuel channels rather than a, an encompassed pressure vessel where the reaction takes place. Another key feature in this reactor is its ability to have online refueling. Now, this means that you can get fresh fuel into the reactor without having to shut down the reactor, okay? This means a lot of a lot more consistent energy supply and a lot more benefits that come with this reactor design. And you, you'll see other generation two reactor designs which need to be shut down and then the fuel needs to be replaced. But this has the benefit of online refueling, similar to Kandu reactors. So let's talk about the history of the Magnox reactor design. In total, there were around 26 reactors that were built across the United Kingdoms. And, and, and this ranged from the year 1950 to the year 1970s. So since this design wasn't as effective as other nuclear reactors at producing electricity, there were very few exports to other nations. The Magnox design was superseded by the AGR or the Advanced Gas Cooled Reactor. Now, this is similarly cooled by gas, but it has improved economic performance. Calder Hall was located at the Sellafield site and was the first Magnox reactor to be built in the year 1956, which is also regarded as the, the world's first commercial scale electricity producing reactor. Now also the very first Magnox station started operating, like I said, in the year 1956. The last Magnox, however, in Britain uh, was shut down in most recently in the year 2015. Internationally, there was only one other Magnox reactor that was exported to Japan and another one to Italy. However, in the year 2016, the only operational Magnox reactor that remains is actually located in the country North Korea. Okay, this is a very interesting story that I could talk about in another video. This is based off of the design that was made public uh, for Atoms for Peace conference that took place. And unfortunately, this, this conference was taken advantage of by the North Korean government where they replicated that design. These reactors were originally 
designed for dual usage, so for both electricity production and also production of reactor grade plutonium, which is quite interesting. All right, so let's talk about the Magnox alloy. This, uh, the alloy in which this reactor gets its name, Magnox, love that name. The magnesium alloy is used in reactor fuel assemblies and has the advantage of low neutron crop capture cross-section. So this basically means it's invisible to neutrons, okay? And this is something that's very similar to zirconium. The zirconium alloy is the most popular alloy used across nuclear reactors. I actually have a ring that I received from graduating from the nuclear engineering program at Ontario Tech. I uh, got that ring, it's made out of zirconium. I wonder if I can get my hands on a magnesium alloy ring. I'd love to have that as well. Uh, if you're from the UK, please let me know. But this basically means that the alloy is invisible to neutrons, can be used more efficiently to produce electricity. However, there are two disadvantages to this alloy. Number one, it limits the maximum temperature of the fuel. Overall, it impacts the thermal efficiency of the plant. And this, the second aspect, which is a disadvantage, is that it reacts with water. This prevents the long-term storage of spent fuel in water. And now you understand why the coolant is used, carbon dioxide coolant is used, because of this Magnox alloy. The fuel has cooling fins that are placed uh, to provide maximum heating transfer in low operating temperatures. It's very interesting. It reminds me of the heat sinks in computers because they also have cooling fins uh, because they're also air cooled. Uh, uranium metal, on the other hand, is also used in the Magnox reactor since it makes reprocessing of uranium much more straightforward and easy. Uh, also, it lowers the cost of reprocessing uh, the fuel. The Magnox spent fuel is reprocessed into other fuel called uh, MOX or mixed oxide fuels. This is a very interesting way to uh, recycle uranium, uh, MOX. I can create a video on, on this topic as well, which I find very, very interesting. Well, there you have it. That's an overview of the United Kingdom's reactor design called the Magnox. It has left a mark on nuclear history. Its developments have helped us develop additional nuclear reactors across the world and further refine the design, the technology that we have today. Very, very interesting nuclear reactor uh, and hope you enjoy some of my other generation two reactor, re reactor designs in the series in the link below. Hope you get a chance to subscribe. Uh, till then, take care. Thank you.